Okay, sergeants, please start your recordings. I have started the record to PC. The cloud is up. Backup is rolling. Sergeant Bradley, please, with your opening. Hello and good morning, and welcome to today's committee on land use. Sergeant, please start Roll your Rolls, started, uh, please turn on your videos. Please place electronic devices on vibrate. Thank you. Chair, we may begin. All right, great. Um, good morning. I am Council Member Rafael Salamanca. I'm the chair of the Committee on Land Use. I'm joined today remotely by members of the Committee on Land Use. We have Council Members Adams, Ayala. Uh, Want to congratulate uh, Council Member Brooke Powers, who's with us today for the first time. Uh, Council Member Deutsch, uh, Dia Senior, Gibson, Gredenchen, Gredenchen, Ku, Menchaca, Miller, Chemoya, Chair Riley. Rivera and Van Bramer. Uh, today we will vote on several applications referred out for our subcommittees, but before we begin, I would like to recognize the committee council to review the remote meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. I am Julie Lubin, counsel to this committee. Council members who would like to ask questions or make remarks should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of the participant panel. I will announce council members who have questions or remarks in the order that they raise their hands. Chair Salamanca will then recognize members to speak. We ask that you please be patient if any technical difficulties arise today. Chair Salamanca will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, thank you, Council. From our zoning subcommittee, we will vote to approve preconsiders LUs 738, 739, and 740 for the Arv Arvine East proposal related to property in Council Member Brooke Powers District in Queens. And again, welcome Council Member Brooke Powers. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment affecting a portion of the Arvini Urban Renewal Area to rezone it from a C4-4 district to the special MX-21 mixed use district as an M1-4R6 district. The proposal also includes a zoning text amendment to establish the new MX-21 district and the designation of the urban development action area and approval of an urban development action area project. The proposed action will facilitate a mixed use development with approximately 1,650 dwelling units, including 1,320 affordable and 330 market rate units. 200, uh, 252,000 square feet of commercial space, 22,000 square feet of community facility, 10,000 square feet of manufacturing space, and 3.3 acres of privately owned recreation and open spaces, 15 acres of public open space, and approximately 1,765 parking spaces. We will also vote to approve with modification preconsiders uh, 733 and 734 for the 737 Fourth Avenue rezoning related to property in Councilmember Menchaca's district in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an existing M1 1D district to an RAA slash C2 4 district and a related zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one and option two. Together, these actions will facilitate the development of a new 14-story mixed-use building with approximately 142 dwelling units, up to 35 of which would be affordable, as well as ground floor commercial use and 52 below grade accessory parking spaces. A modification will be to strike option two while retaining option one. We will also vote to approve preconsiders 748 and 749 for the 50-25 Barnett Avenue rezoning related to property in Council Member Van Bramer's district in Queens. The application as proposed seeks a zoning map amendment to change an existing M1-1 district to an R6A district and related zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one. The proposed actions will facilitate a new mixed use development with 100% affordable housing component, including approximately 167 dwelling units, as well as ground floor office space for community facility use and approximately 170 parking spaces. We will also vote to approve preconsider 750 and 751 for the 1099 Webster Avenue rezoning related to property in council member Vanessa Gibson's district in the Bronx. The application seeks a zoning map amendment to rezone an M1-1 district to an R7X slash C2-4 district and a related zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one. 
Together, these actions will facilitate the development of two new mixed use buildings with 100% affordable housing component, including approximately 238 dwelling units, as well as ground floor commercial use and approximately 73 below grade accessory parking spaces. From our landmark subcommittee, we will vote to approve four projects in Council Member Perkins District in Manhattan. LU 743, the Harlem Open Door Cluster, concerns property located at 2735 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, uh, 2752 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, 131 West, 133rd Street, and 130 West, 134th Street in Manhattan Community District 10. This application will facilitate the construction of four new affordable home ownership buildings with a total of approximately 48 units. In connection with this project, we will vote to approve LU 744, submitted pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law for approval of a related tax exemption. We will vote to approve LU 745, the Harlem NCPCB 11 site for property located at 2 East 130th Street, also in Manhattan Community District 11. This application will facilitate the construction of one four-story affordable rental buildings with seven units. We will vote to approve LU 746, the Central Harlem Infill NCP project for properties located at 2803 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, 136 West 137th Street, 203 West 135th Street, 61 West 130th Street, 142 West 129th Street, and 109 West 126th Street in Manhattan Community District 10. This application will facilitate the development of a five new six-story building and one new four-story building, all of which will be fully affordable rental buildings containing a total of 58 units. We will also vote to approve LU 747, the Harlem NCP Western site for property located at 313 West 112th Street in Manhattan Community District 10. This application will facilitate the development of one four-story affordable rental building with seven units. Last, we will also vote to approve LU741, the Lower East Side Cluster ANCP. This is an application submitted by HP, HPD pursuant to an Article 16 of the General Municipal Law and Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law requesting waiver of the area designation requirements and the requirements of Charter Sections 197C and 197D and approval of an Urban Development Action Area Project and exemption for, from real property taxation for properties located at 406-08 East 10th Street, 533 East 11th Street, and 656 East 12th Street in the Manhattan Council District represented by Council Member Rivera. This application will facilitate the preservation of 44 affordable cooperative units pursuant to the Affordable Neighborhood Cooperative, Cooperative Program, ANCP. Members of the committee and members representing affected districts who have questions or remarks about today's items should use the raise hand button now. Council, will you please announce the members in the order that they've raised their hands? Uh, yes, Chair Solomon, I'd also like to just note that we've been joined by Council Member Ruben Diaz Sr. and Council Member Reynoso, and Council Member Gibson has her hand raised. All right. Uh, so I would like to recognize Council Member Gibson. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. Good morning, colleagues. I also want to recognize our newest member on behalf of District 31, Council Member Selvina Brooks Powers. Welcome to the City Council and equally welcome to the Women's Caucus. We are proud to have you. Thank you, Chair. And I also want to thank Chair Moyer for his leadership. Um, I am speaking in favor of land use application number 210103ZMX, which is 1099 Webster Avenue, submitted by 1099 Webster Realty LLC. Uh, very proud of this project. This development site is located at the intersection of Webster Avenue in my district in 166 and 167th Street, about 56,000 square feet. Uh, we are talking about two residential buildings. One is nine story, the other is 11 story for a total of 238 residential units. This entire development project is affordable as low as 27% of the AMI with a maximum of 80% of AMI with a 15% set aside for formerly homeless families. Thank you for your leadership chair on that. Uh, and this project is being financed through the HPD's ELLA program. Uh, we believe and we've pushed a minimum of 10% of three bedroom unit apartments, 30% two bedrooms, 55% one bedroom apartments, and 9% studio. There will be ground level commercial space, about 30,000 square feet for medical office, a supermarket. Uh, there will be indoor parking spaces. 
and there will be temporary construction jobs, local hiring opportunities through Higher NYC and MWBE Build Up program, and about 80 permanent jobs uh, through the Building Service Workers and through a partnership with local 32BJ SEIU. Uh, this project has the support of the local community board, CB4, as well as the Bronx Borough President's Office, um, and on the conditions of local hiring and making sure that we have secured the 10% minimum of three bedroom units, as well as the 15% set aside of formerly homeless families. It includes all of the amenities. We will have uh, space for our children, recreational opportunities, outdoor area space, as well as making sure that the developer has provided a written agreement on paper that we have solidifying all of these agreements, uh, working with the existing businesses in terms of relocation and making sure that all of the terms in the agreement are adhered to. Um, I'm very proud of this work. We've been meeting with the developer well over uh, about two years now in partnership with Community Board 4 and the Bronx Borough President's Office. And I really think that this is a project we can all be proud of. And I ask all of you, my colleagues on the Land Use Committee, to please support this project that will bring 238 units of real affordable housing uh, to the Claremont section of the Bronx. I want to personally thank the Land Use Division. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. Thank you to our Chair Moya, as well as Katie Sullivan, Amy Levitan, and Angelina Martinez-Rubio for all of your help in getting me through this project. Project. Thank you so much, colleagues, and I hope you will vote in favor of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Uh, I see uh, Councilmember Van Bramer's hand up. Yes, thank you, um, uh, Chair Salamanca. And I wish to speak on uh, Lenny's item 748, 749, the 5025 Barnett Avenue project in my district. Uh, first, I wanna um, thank uh, Chair Moya and his committee for uh, voting this out uh, unanimously. And now it's before this land use committee. Uh, this building has been five years in the making. Uh, it was rejected four years ago by myself and community board two uh, because it uh, was not right for our community. It was not contextual. The affordability levels were not uh, sufficient and uh, there was not uh, support from labor, uh, including SEIU 32BJ. And they have come back now with a 100% affordable project that is deeply affordable uh, with the 15% set aside for formerly homeless uh, families, a 40% AMI, uh, and a maximum AMI of 80%. It is the most deeply affordable project that we have seen in Sunnyside, Queens. 32BJ has a signed agreement and testified in favor of this project. Uh, the building has been brought down and is now contextual with the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, and uh, there are ongoing discussions with the Tenant Association of the existing Phipps Garden Apartments, including an improvement plan that is being followed. Uh, four years ago, Community Board 2 voted unanimously against this project, but last fall, Community Board 2 voted uh, overwhelmingly in favor of this project. It has uh, been a long time coming, and for those of us who say we want to build affordable housing, this is an opportunity to build truly affordable housing, deeply affordable housing in a part of Queens that is very expensive. And this is an opportunity for those of us who say we want to house uh, those who are homeless and formerly homeless to actually house those who have been dealing with homelessness. So uh, I support this uh, proposal uh, because we absolutely must do this. Uh, we must actually uh, do the things that we say we want to do, which is to build truly affordable housing, uh, particularly in neighborhoods like Sunnyside Gardens, Queens, which I live in. Uh, so I ask all of my colleagues to support uh, 32BJ, to support the local community board, uh, to support myself, and to support all of those who truly believe that deeply affordable housing, including those for the formerly homeless, uh, deserve to be in every neighborhood in Queens, uh, including in Sunnyside Gardens. And so I am proud to support this project and ask that all of my colleagues support this project today as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Van Bream, and congratulations. 
Um, next up, I want to uh, recognize the newest member of the council, um, council member Brooke Powers. Thank you and good morning. Thank you so much, Chair Salamanca. Today, the Land Use Committee will vote on the Arvin East application. And um, it's a, a project that has been quite honestly, decades long planning um, in the making. The proposed actions before the committee will facilitate the construction of the Eastern portion of the Arvern Herbal Renewal Area by designating the central portion of the urban renewal area as a nature preserve and a new mixed use district to facilitate the construction of a brewery. I wanna recognize the hard work and dedication of my predecessor, now borough president um, who has and all the work that he's put into this project. This project was initially contemplated as a mixed use development that was 80% market rate and 20% affordable. The first phase including two buildings will include approximately 500 affordable housing units with 100 units set aside for families earning between 40% and 50% AMI. Um, also, there will be 100 units set aside for families earning 30% AMI and 75 units for the formerly homeless population. The applicant agrees, has agreed to meet the goal of 30% of the project contracts be given to MWBEs and an emphasis on local hiring within the Rockaway Peninsula in the zip codes nearest the project site. The applicant has also committed to working in good faith with local labor unions during the construction and operation of the project site. The applicant has also committed to working with our office and other local stakeholders to identify the best use of the 22,000 square foot floor, square footage of floor area reserved for community facility uses. I look forward to bringing the local community together to identify what use would be the highest benefit for the Rockaway community. I'm pleased that the administration has committed to working with my office to locate, to, excuse me, to address the urgent need for new health care on the peninsula. The recent actions by the New York State Department of Health to potentially convert St. John's Hospital into a micro hospital underscores the need for greater capacity. Having the second deadliest zip code, the Rockaway Peninsula was hit hard by COVID and prioritizing preventative healthcare measures and additional em emergency capacities are all sorely needed to ensure we do not see the same inequities in how much harder COVID affected low income communities and communities of color in a future health crisis. I look forward to expediting the siting of this facility and I will fight to see this project as responsive to the needs of the community. We are in an inflection point right now when we see the new development and families still fighting to make ends meet. Far Rockaway is beautiful, resilient and determined. The residents have absorbed much from Superstorm Sandy to the current global pandemic. We welcome all those who recognize our thriving community and wish to invest, reside, and become a fabric of the community. But we must be serious about the more than 80 acres of city land to ensure we leverage it properly. I have and will continue to fight for diversity, inclusion, and equity, strengthening the broadband infrastructure to shrink the digital divide and a holistic community benefits agreement. These are important ingredients that are not found here at this time, but the developer team that consists of LM, Blue Stone, and Triangle Equities have committed to working with my office to ensure that these aforementioned issues and more are addressed post haste. More importantly, the developer team has a chance to prove why they're different. I've decided to move forward to make this project better, but under no terms will the needs of my community be ignored. Finally, I thank the applicant for committing to meeting with the with a community advisory board to monitor the development and progress of the significant mixed use development project. This is not the end of the planning process, but really just the beginning. I look forward to ensuring that this project is a benefit and not a burden on our community. As the project progresses, we will make sure that any nuances, excuse me, any new nuances from the construction and operation of the site are properly addressed by the applicant. In particular, I look forward to ensuring that the brewery that's located on the project site 
does not reduce the quality of life of neighboring residents and does not impact any lo local school operations. We desperately need more affordable housing, not just in the Rockaways, but across the city. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on this application. I look forward to working with you in the very near future on a wide range of issues facing our respective communities and the city as a whole. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. Thank you, Council Member, and welcome once again. I uh, want to recognize uh, Council Member Chaka. He has his hand up. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to all the members of this committee. Uh, I made longer remarks back uh, last week at the subcommittee, and I want to say thank you to everyone who was on the subcommittee as well. Uh, I am here to talk about 737 Fourth Avenue. Uh, from the beginning, the community board, which is the most democratic and participatory forum we have in the neighborhood, took control of this rezoning proposal, and it invited the developer to follow the community's lead it held multiple hearings open to all to decide whether or how to support the project and democratically voted to prove the project with conditions. Over time and critical engagement, the developer agreed to meet all the board's conditions. They codified them in a binding contract known as a community benefits agreement. I understand why the community board approved this project. The CBA requires the developer to build 33 permanently affordable housing units, reserve a third of its commercial space for local businesses, hire majority local or union workers for all of its construction and permanent jobs, create 150 bike stations of which a third will be reserved for delivery workers and grants the MTA a free easement to build an ADA accessible elevator to the 25th Street R station located right across the street. The 33 permanently affordable units will be between 30% AMI and 60% AMI. This means a family of three making 30,000 to 60,000 a year can afford them. MIH option one requires an average of 60% affordability uh, under the AMI. The affordability, affordability here is an average of 48% AMI. Uh, what we're asking today is we're gonna send it back to the CPC so they can remove option two, uh, and then we'll take it back uh, to the city council. So uh, not only are these things required um, by the CBA, but they are required regardless of who owns the land. That means the developer cannot turn around and sell this property and thereby undo these commitments. I'm really proud of the community for coming together and making this happen. And I support this project. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councilman Menchaca. Um, Council, are there any other members with their hands up? No, there aren't. Oh, right. Council Member Rivera. Council Member Rivera. I recognize Council Member Rivera. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to say something very brief about the application today. So thank you, Chair Salamanca, my colleagues, for granting me the opportunity to speak in support of the proposed application for the Article 11 Tax Exemption and Urban Development Action Area Project for 406-08 East 10th Street, 533 East 11th Street, and 656 East 12th Street, all located in the East Village neighborhood in my district. The designated developer, Asian Americans for Equality, AFI, a trusted community partner in the Lower East Side, has been working with families across these 44 units of housing on a conversion that will yield affordable home ownership opportunities for the current residents with broad support from the tenants. Further, the portfolio includes three commercial spaces, one of which is currently occupied by a legacy immigrant owned food business and the owner who's also a resident has expressed support for this project. Longtime residents of the East Village continue to experience pressure due to rising rents. The pathway to equity represents an opportunity for residents of LES cluster and future shareholders to remain in place. Affordable home ownership is a priority of mine, and I know the council agrees. And I thank the Landmarks Committee for approving this action. And I thank, of course, my fellow committees today for joining me in voting aye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, council, is there other members that wish to speak that has a hands up? No additional hands. No? All right, awesome. I will now call on a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and the local members to approve LU 738, 739, 740, 741, 
743, 744, 745, 746, 747, 748, 749, 750, and 751. And to approve the modifications, I've described LU 733 and 734. Will the clerk please call the roll? Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on land use. All items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. I and all. Gibson. Thank you again, Chair Salamanca, Chair Moya, and I also want to thank my Director of Policy and Legislation, Jeffrey Velasquez. I vote aye on all of today's agenda items. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you. Councilmember Barron. Permission to explain my vote. Councilmember Barron to explain her vote. Thank you. First, I want to welcome uh, our new council member, uh, Councilmember Brooks Powers. And in terms of the legislation that we're facing today, I am going to, I commend my colleagues on the work that they've done to get to the positions that they're in. But in terms of the project on the Lower East Side, as I've read it, it says that the maintenance fees would be 40% of a person's income. And I think that that is excessive, whereas most of the housing advocate groups that I've spoken to uh, say that 30% is the optimum. So for that reason, I'm voting no on 741 and I am abstaining on 743 and 7, 743. And if there are any accompanying resolutions to that, and I'm voting aye on all the others. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deutsch. Aye and all. Cool. I want to congratulate all the council members that have passed today's legislation on land use. I will eye on all. Thank you. Levin. Good eye on all. Miller. Permission to explain? Councilmember Miller to explain his vote. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to first welcome my, my colleague and my neighbor, Savannah Brooks Powers, to, to the council. And we just put you right in the fire and threw you right to work. Um, as a matter of support on this issue, that the uh, uh, bill that you have before us today, um, uh, let me just say that I have my concerns about um, uh, public land and developers and their responsibilities when they are the recipients of public land, particularly when they come with the type of background and history as some of the developers that are involved today. Knowing my prede uh, your predecessor, uh, Borough President Richards, and, and, and uh, the work that he has done on this projects, project and, and um, him briefing you and, and, and you being satisfied that we should move forward with this project, I'm just going to say that I'm going to lend my support and expertise to you. Um, and I'm sure this committee will as well as you move forward on this project. Are, all eyes and ears need to be on this, and I assure you they will be. With that, I will be voting aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Reynoso. I vote aye on all. Kordenchik. Uh, I want to welcome my uh, newest colleague, uh, Councilmember Brooks Powers. Uh, I know when you said decades, I was waiting for that word about Auburn because um, I know it has been decades and then some. So I really want to congratulate you. Uh, it seems, Mr. Chairman, that we're doing about uh, four years worth of work here today. I want to congratulate my other colleagues um, who have worked so hard to get these projects uh, to where they are today. And with that, I uh, happily vote aye on all. Thank you, Adams. Yes, uh, welcome to Mr. Colleague, Council Member Brooks Powers. It's so great to see you here on the Land Use Committee. So excited that you're here. South Queens is definitely in the house today. Uh, congratulating uh, also Council Member Van Bramer uh, on the work for this project and getting us here to this vote today. Just to echo uh, Council Member Miller's, Miller's sentiments regarding the Arvern project. Uh, we have been watching this project. It, it has been a couple of years. There were immense concerns about this developer and the developer's intention uh, for Arvern and for Far Rockaway in the long scheme. 
Uh, and again, uh, the, the words that you brought us, Councilmember Brooks Powers, today in support uh, and, and understanding of the developer, the history of the developer, some not so great, but knowing that you support this project, and I know that former Councilmember Richards, now Borough President, um, did so much work on this to get us here today to this vote. So I enthusiastically support you and just know that I am here for you uh, as our colleagues are here for you to support you and your work. With that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Council Member Ayala. I vote aye on all. Ruben Diaz. Aye on all. Moya. I vote aye. Thank you. Rivera. Congratulations to my colleagues. I vote aye on all. Riley. I uh, would like to welcome Council Member Brooks Powers uh, to the City Council. I'm so happy to see that you're here with us now. And I would like to thank uh, all my colleagues for their legislation, legislation today. And I will be voting aye on all. Congratulations, everyone. Borelli. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. All items in today's land use agenda have been adopted by a vote of 17 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of the following land use applications. Land use item 741 was adopted by the council with 16 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions, and land use item 743 adopted by the committee 16 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I would like to thank members of the public, my colleagues, council and sergeant of arms and land staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you.